one of the reason why we hosted the conference was basically to objective is to driving affordable and quality assistive technology in india and we want to do that from india and we want to move ahead on that basically the i have put together this slide there are four stages of four stages of technology development first is the basic r&d identifying technology and carrying out the r&d proving the science well, this is the first stage the second is pilot where technology and economic viability is tested hmm? where things are kept ready and technology and economic viability is tested after the technology and viability is through we go to this early implementation the early implementation is basically proof readiness to make uh, to scale it is for building market the key thing is we have to ensure that the customer is happy and this is the place where we require policy intervention and some financial incentives and finally the scale implementation where it is market ready scale manufacturing and deployment that's what is required every technology to scale has to go through these four stages one of the point that i want to make that what i observe remember the right in the beginning i mentioned that i have not worked in assistive technology and therefore i was more of a observer and i didn't could not attend all the uh, talks i attended several and i went through the exhibition and talked to several people my feeling is we are still very very much in these two stages we are not even really full pilots which really prove the scalability and prove the economic viability is still not there and this is our task therefore for the next few years to overcome uh so what will be the strategy to make india a leader first of all i think we have to commit to try to get 10000 youngsters to start working in this area and then 10000 to 50000 i think if we can get 50000 engineers gainfully creatively working in this area we will have that job that and i'm not specifically looking at engineers so that is sorry i'm we are very often engineers and designers i am putting it from all disciplines to work on the assistive technology of course any technology where customer is not happy is useless so i'm taking that for granted that that would clear so what is the mechanism to go about doing it the mechanism that i know of there are others who may think of something else the mechanism that we at research park knows of know of is that we will create excitement in colleges we like large number of youngsters who are in second year third year fourth year to start learning we will we plan to put short at courses 5 hour 10 hour not longer hmm? and so that you can get a flavor of what is the technology involved in different areas and i'll request others to help us we will take the initiative we'll not stop uh, at any place but we like help from all of you who are far more experienced than we are we will create build club in each of this place huh? and uh, where students will play and build things many of these things we saw here in the exhibition only when they play and start building things they fail doesn't matter it's like a lego as you start putting things together you learn how to build and if you learn how to build you get the confidence confidence and that confidence will get us to start creating startup the next job and i think startups are starting to get created still too few hmm? while we talked about 400 yesterday in the atf award ceremony we didn't see that many uh, and some of them are very very early stage we have to then get these products drive them to scale commercialization that's a very very important we have to really make each one of them reach customers at scale and i want to point out one thing why there are many other things that we can do if the products are going to really empower you remember this name empower if it really empowers a person and let that person earn a decent livelihood then all that we require is a decent emi scheme where they can get financing and over the next year two year three year pay for huh 
Uh, even when we took this new bowl, costing about 90,000, 95,000 rupees. Yes, it is expensive. We are looking at how one can provide some subsidy and all that. But I'm saying even if it costs 95,000 rupees, even if it gives somebody a job of 25,000 rupees a month, I think they can afford to keep 5,000 rupees apart for this. And in about a year, two years time, they can pay for it. Hmm? They can possibly get better jobs and pay a little more. So primarily, good financial schemes will be needed. I think extremely important and we'll create that. We have one of the strongest fintech ecosystem out here. We will create EMI schemes and which basically means if customer is not happy, customer is not going to get it. When we take grant and give it to people, then if the customer takes it and then can keep it aside. But if the customer is going to pay, we can put a little bit of subsidy, I don't mind. I certainly would like to see that, uh, number one, uh, that tax rate on these kind of components and systems are very, very low. Number two, we'll look at if anything high cost, we'll try to see where the, can the subsidy come from. I, I will, I'll talk about it. How many startups can get to 100 crore rupees? This is our task. I'm talking about all of us who are kind of mentors to this program. How can we get, we get three of them to 100 crores. I'll tell you, 10,000 startups will come up, enough money will come. The venture capital is looking for the trigger. Can any or one of them reach 200 crore revenue? 100 crore revenue in three years per year. And that's what we will try to do. We'll retake new bolt and run, and we'll hopefully take others and run that. Mm. Then there are other problems. These are something that we can have startup to. But then there are complex problems. And whatever little that I have been talking to different people. I've talked to Mohan Shankar quite a bit, Anil. Sujata has been kind of telling me, serious and long-term R&D. When I was listening to Sujata's presentation, she really talked about the, the most complex mechanical problem will have to be solved to really provide something which a user requires in the form of wheelchair or a standing wheelchair. Now that is requires serious and long-term R&D. Fine the right and committed scientists, there are too few. And unfortunately, I saw too few here. I'm sorry, I'm in this area for only three to four months. And I've been looking for people. And I thought that this conference would bring a lot. I saw very few good scientists yet. And this is something that we'll have to kind of figure out how to do. Find committed youngsters who is doing masters, PhD or project stuff to take up the challenge along with the, these people. And we have to find way the support for R&D. This is a problem. What can government support? What can, where else can we find support? This is something that we have to figure it out. One of the things that, uh, and I'm sorry I did not attend all the talks, so I mean my statement may be wrong partly. What did I find, and I who has been an outsider, I still consider myself an outsider, found missing, should have a stream to carry out detailed technical brainstorming and potential solutions. I didn't see that. Occasionally, here and there, I saw some people presenting that this kind of technical problem. I, would, I want mainstream, some scientists who do not even work on AT should also get involved because the problem exists. Hmm? Problem, not necessarily because it is going to be used for assistive technology, but a simple problem and a technology problem, the science problem, it should excite them. And I think a stream of empower in years to come should have a very serious technical discussion. Where multiple uh, uh, scholars and um, uh, scientists kind of discuss, can this be done? And if you do this, what what happens? Hmm? Um, finally, my last slide. It certainly requires helpful policy. There is no ifs and buts, and we have to push uh, uh, the government for helpful policies. That's the reason we are tying up with different organizations to see whether they can help us push. Um, for example, a thing that I just cannot understand. If I don't give a donation to an educational institute, if I give a donation to IIT, I get 100% tax exempt. If I want to give a donation to a person who requires a top class wheelchair or top class or other assistive devices, why should I not get 100% tax exempt? Now this is something, it's a no brainer. 
I think we have not really made enough noise on that. We make noise on all kinds of things. We do not make noise on this. But yes, let, I mean, we don't be 100% that we give the cost of the goods. We give them 30%, 40%. It helps them reduce their EMI. Finally, I still want that financing and EMI because nobody is going to pay you EMI if they don't like the product. Now, that is the, one of the best validation uh, of this. And, but yet, you may upfront subsidize partly and let people get 100% um, taxes. And financing consumer for ATT devices is very important. If India has to become a leader in assistive technology for people with disability, we have to go through all these stages. As I pointed out, I still saw very early R&D and some early pilots. Only rarely are we crossing that to the next stage. That's all that I want to state.